hello everyone and welcome back to my channel i am back with another episode in the piper arrow 3 tutorial series it's been a long time since i've uploaded an episode in this series so i apologize for that but there are a lot of videos that have come out in in these uh, last two weeks so if you have missed those out please go ahead and check them out on my channel i will also leave a link to all the previous episodes of this series somewhere on the top right corner right now this episode is going to be all about autopilot so without any further ado let's directly dive into all the different modes of the autopilot on our piper arrow 3 and what's special on the just flight piper arrow 3 specifically so i think first things first we are going to go over the altitude hold feature in this airplane now the actual airplane does not really have the altitude hold feature but just flight has provided us with a nice little invisible button that you can use for holding altitude ideally you just have to trim this aircraft out and it'll kind of fly on its own throughout your cruise phase but yeah th there is this uh, invisible button that you can use here on this add-on to um, hold the altitude by the way we are flying at Sydney here if in case anyone's wondering okay so right now I'm flying this aircraft manually now um, for the autopilot this is all you will need to mess with and there is this mode selector alright okay so for altitude hold to work all you need to do is have the autopilot switch in the on position you do not need to have your heading switch on for altitude hold to work so once you turn on your autopilot and you can click somewhere around this uh, mode selector and that's the invisible switch so anywhere around this mode selector and you will go into altitude hold mode so I have just clicked on it and you can see how our vertical speed is stabilizing to zero. So there you go. Once you have reached your cruising altitude, you can hit this button, turn the autopilot on, and that will put you into altitude hold mode. The next thing we are going to learn about is the heading hold. Now, except altitude hold, if you want to use any of these modes of the autopilot you have to have the heading switch on it's the name itself says it's heading switch but you have to have it on for even using the nav mode or the omni mode or the localizer norm mode or the localizer rev mode or the heading mode itself so just remember that for you to use any of these modes you have to have the heading switch on so we already have the mode selector on the heading mode and we have our bug um, heading bug which it is going to follow when I enable heading mode set to north heading so now all I have to do is turn the heading switch on and it should turn us towards north heading so there we go it will try to maintain about I think 30 degrees on the turn without losing any altitude so it'll do a nice steady turn for us until we reach that heading so yeah very simple and easy to use now once you have reached north let's say I wanted to face downtown so that be about 060 zero zero, so I can kind of if it stops zooming in on me go to 060 and it will continue the turn to 060 there we go and it has stabilized now so that's how the heading mode works next I'm gonna have you look at the roll lock feature so if you don't have the heading switch on that means you're not in the heading mode now and it is not following this heading bug what you can do is lock your airplane into a roll angle you see how the yoke is turning let me enable this one up as well now it is locked at whatever angle I have set here so it's going to keep turning until I bring this back to center so you can also turn this way and this will also do a stable coordinated turn for you but it is not going to stop at the heading you want you will have to manually switch this to 
to the center in order to get back to the center and level off again. So that's another neat little feature that you have with the autopilot. For this feature to work, you do not need to have the heading switch on. You only need to have this on if you're using any of these autopilot modes except the altitude hold mode. So to demonstrate the localizer normal mode, which will help us to fly an ILS approach into Sydney today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly the um, ILS localizer runway 16 left approach. Right now we are facing away from the localizer here, but I'm going to use this time to set us up for the approach. By the way, we are in the heading mode and we have the altitude hold on. So what I'm going to do now is uh, fill in the frequency that we need to fly. Um, that's the localizer frequency here, which is 110.9. So you can push this button and go from communication to localizer frequency. This is the inactive frequency, the one that's highlighted. So let's go ahead and change that to 110, 110.9. There we go. And when you hit the swap button, that will bring it to active. And you see how we have all our instruments going live here. That will show us the direction to the runway 16 left. So now what I'm going to do is go parallel to the localizer, which is I think about 330 heading and then turn left to intersect the localizer. And right before I'm going to intersect it, I will turn the localizer normal mode on and you will see this needle coming in closer to the center and you will also see uh, this yellow needle coming into the center. So our final approach course is 155, which is uh, right here, which makes sense, which makes complete sense because the runway is exactly 90 degrees from us uh, in this direction, somewhere here. All right. The vertical line here shows that we are below the glide slope, which makes sense when you intersect the glide slope you're going to start we're going to have to start descending manually okay i think we are almost there so i can go to the localizer normal mode so it has put us on a 45 degree intersection to the localizer now it will go straight and then it will start turning in to line us up glide slope has started kicking in as you can see here so now that the glide slope has started kicking in I'm going to disable altitude hold and uh, just follow the glide slope if we descend at a steady uh, 700 feet per minute we should keep at the glide slope. I'm trying to trim the aircraft so that it descends at that rate. We're slowly going in the direction of the runway and uh, we will eventually line up. That's our runway here. Let's quickly see where we are at. We almost lined up. steady descent now it has put us exactly in the runway direction and you can see the line is in the center you can also see that the yellow line has started centering out and it's almost there as well now since we haven't filled out the nav 2 frequency this one's disabled and that's what it shows uh, by this uh, red and white strip here. Uh, 
I'm going to turn off the autopilot and fly it manually down to the runway. So we are higher than expected. So I'm going to go out on throttle. Landing lights are on, landing gear is down. We are good to go. Battling some really nasty winds here. Right, I'm gonna idle it. Flare, a uh, bit off from the center line, but whatever. And there we go. that's how you fly a localizer approach now coming on to the nav mode in the autopilot mode selector now that is used to either track um, any of your VORs that you would have tuned in in the nav 1 or nav 2 frequencies or you can track your uh, route that you have planned in the GNS 530 here so let's say here I have planned a route uh, a quick route here nothing fancy I've just literally put in a direct GPS route from one airport to another and you can see that our plane is going in the opposite direction of that route now I want to bring that back onto this uh, pink line so what I can do is uh, obviously turn this to GPS because we want our nav mode to follow the GPS path we don't want it to look at the frequencies that we have put in here so you do that and then you change your um, autopilot mode selector to nav now you'll see our plane will slowly turn towards that uh, path that we have planned intercept it and then follow that path to wherever it goes now for the nav mode to be enabled obviously you need the autopilot switch on the master switch and you also need the heading switch on like I said before you need the heading switch on for any of these mode uh, any of these modes to work out so we are at a 45 degrees or so angle to the route that we have planned so as soon as it intercepts it just like a localizer intercept is going to turn left and uh, follow that flight path that we have loaded into the GNS 530 so that's how the nav mode works um, with GPS there we go so it knows that we are very close to the route now you can also see that the needle here is now tracking this line here so we are on the left side of that line still so it shows that the needle is on the right of the center same way for this uh, yellow needle as well it works very similar to the localizer approach that we just talked about before but the only difference is here it's trying to track the flight path and not the localizer frequency now if you change this to nav it's going to stop tracking the flight path and it will try to track the frequencies that we have loaded in for VLOC uh, 1 and VLOC 2 here and we'll go over that as well when we learn about how to travel to and from a VOR So now we are lined up on the flight path and the needles are all centered out. You can also use Omni mode for this because it doesn't really matter whether you are on nav or Omni, it is going to help you it is going to help you track the flight path that you have or the route that you have loaded into GNS 530. In this part of the video we will learn how to fly to a VOR or how to fly away from a VOR using the Omni mode selector on the autopilot um, here so let's look at the charts here we are somewhere in this area we know that we are somewhere in this area but we don't know where we are in reference to this VOR and let's say I need to hit this VOR because there is an airport there it's called YPBO and I need to land at that airport 
So how do I look for that airport? There is a VOR and the frequency is 116.9. So first things first, I am going to tune that frequency in here on the inactive VOR frequency, 116.9. And then I'll swap it to active. Once it goes active, you will see that our HSI indicator is live. Now, first thing that I need to do is uh, find what heading I need to fly in order to go to that VOR. And how do you do it? So you rotate the HSI needle up to a point where the center needle matches with the top and bottom. Okay, so I'll keep rotating until the center needle kicks in and starts matching there you go starts matching with the rest of the needle so now it's a fairly good match and uh, this shows that I need to fly about a heading of 150 in order to go towards that VOR since the arrow is pointing in that direction that means you will be going towards that VOR and if you want to fly away from that VOR you have to look at the opposite side of that arrow which is this side which is the heading that we are currently flying at so you have to fly about 330 to go away from the VOR which we are doing right now but if you want to enter that VOR or if you want to hit that VOR from a radial of 150 this is the heading you have to fly alright that's what the same information is also being given by this uh, indicator here you'll see that we have to fly about a heading of 150 to go towards that VOR so now let's put it into Omni mode it should take a U-turn and point us towards that VOR at a radial of 150 so now if we look at the charts here and enable our current position it's going to take a U-turn and get into this VOR or fly towards this VOR at a radial of 150 or it's about 155 so since we are turning it will go a bit off track but then it will adjust again and uh, find the line that it needs to follow so I usually use Omni mode in order to fly to and uh, fly away from a VUR and I use the nav mode for uh, ILS and localized approaches and uh, also for following the GPS route right now it has put us to about a 45 degree angle to the flight path that we should be going at so it will be somewhere in this direction so once it hits that one five, uh, 155 radial line it's going to put us on that track so that is it for the autopilot guide Thank you all for watching this video and uh, I know I didn't go into a lot of detail on the VOR navigation part but I hope you got the gist of it. We will definitely cover that in a completely separate video by itself. Next video is going to be about cold and dark startup tutorial on this airplane and the last two episodes will be full flights. We will mostly be flying somewhere in Australia since World Update 7 has come out and Australia looks just stunning. So I'm excited to explore australia and in this little airplane but yeah thank you guys for tuning in i've been seeing a lot of new subscribers coming in from the recent videos that i've been uploading so thank you thank you thanks a lot for subscribing you could be doing anything but you chose to spend time watching these uh, videos and i really appreciate it thank you and i'll see you on the next one